Shalom and greetings, everybody. Brother Nicholas James Vanderlane here. Victory for the people of Israel from by the narrow path, which are the Ten Commandments. Today is the 26th day of the fourth month on Elohim Zadok Priest, Dead Sea Scroll, Enoch Solar Calendar, July 15th, 2019. Video is being broadcasted from Farmagusta region of Cyprus. This video is titled, Rightly Dividing the Festivals of Leviticus 23. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you something the Spirit of Truth shared with me about a year ago in September of 2018 while I was in Jerusalem. I've put this in, in several of my videos, but I wanted to make one video dedicated to this so this can be shared and referenced and people can reference it and share it with everybody else. So I'm going to show you where the divider, there are literal dividers placed within the chapter of Leviticus 23. That divides and groups the feasts. And that literal divider is this. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. This appears approximately five times in the chapter. So here you have the breakdown within the chapter. And here you have it. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. This is in 23, verse 1 and 2. And then we are giving the instruction in verse 3 for the seventh day Sabbath. In verse 5 for the Passover. Verse 6 through 8 for the unleavened bread. So all of these are linked together, pre predominantly the Passover and unleavened bread. Then in verse 9 to 10, it says, And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. This divides the last set of feasts from this new set of feasts and groups the next two mentioned feasts together until the next divider. We're given the instructions in verse 10 through 14 for the wave sheep and first fruits of the barley. Then we are given the instruction for, in verse 15 through 22, for Shavuot, which is the festival of weeks, and the first fruits of the wheat harvest. What's interesting is that the reason why I'm making this is because I discovered that this, this festival break, when I was looking at the wave sheet for fruits of the barley, okay, because traditionally, according to Jewish tradition, which is coming to the Messianic and Christian understanding, is, is that this wave sheet happens during the week of unleavened bread, but this is completely false. I, I saw in the temple scroll found in Qumran of the righteous Zadok priest, it gives us the instruction and it pegs the first fruit bickering to be the 26th day of the first month, which means that it happens after the festival of first fruits. Well, I, I saw that and I read that in the text and it made me go back to look at uh, this chapter, and sure enough, these dividers were here. So now let me go ahead and continue. Now we have a break. Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. That's in verse 23 to 24. And then we're given the instructions in verse 24 and 25 for Yah Yom Teruah. And then it says, And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, See how speak unto the children of Israel is left out. And then in verse 27 through 32, we're given the instruction for atonement, Yom Kippur. The reason why I believe that this is kept out is because these two festivals, Trumpets and Yom Kippur, are connected. There's ten days, and this is where the Jews get that tradition of the days of awe. Yet they don't have a biblical basis. Well, the Spirit of Truth gave me the biblical basis. Hallelujah. I take no credit for this. I'm sharing it with you freely I receive and freely I give for the reason for this tradition of the ten days of awe. We read about the 10 days of awe in Gad the Seer. I talked about this in my Days of Awe video that I did. I suggest everybody see that. But that literally is the 10 days that's mentioned in Gad the Seer. So this means that Yom Teruah and Yom Kippur are semi-connected. And then again in verse 33 through 34 we get, And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. And then in verse 34 to 43 we're given the instruction for Sukkot Tabernacles. In, 30, in verse 39, it's the eighth day, the addition day, which is part of this festival. And then at the end, in verse 44, it says, And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of Yahweh. So this closes out this chapter. So hopefully you're blessed by this information. And this is straight from the spirit of truth that led me into this. Now that we've discussed this, I want to share with you Yeshua's fulfillment of his Moedim in appointed times. So, uh, the seventh day Sabbath, Yeshua kept it, he lived it, he showed us how to keep it according to truth, not according to the Pharisees, because there was contention over it. 
They had falsely accused him of him breaking it, but no, he's the master of the Sabbath, and he lived it out, and he showed us how to do that it's good to do good on the Sabbath, to save life, to preserve life on the Sabbath. Do you think that when the man was beaten on the road to Jericho, the innkeeper didn't take care of the of the of the man that was almost on basically on life support? He just disregarded that man? No! Of course he probably took care of this man. Of course he took care of this man on the Sabbath. He couldn't walk. He had to eat. He had to use the restroom. Whatever it might have been. His wounds and everything else. And that man that was beaten on the road to Jericho, maybe it was Yeshua himself. If you've ever thought about that. And also Yeshua resurrected on the Sabbath, which I've proven. As you can see, in Matthew 28 verse 1, when Mary and Mary went to the tomb, it was uh, at the dawn of the day and it was coming upon the first day of the week. The Sabbath was ending and it was coming upon the first day of the week. And then, so the Passover Yeshua, he didn't die on the Passover. I've proven this before. Yeshua had Passover with his disciples. He told them to go prepare the Passover. He ate the Passover. Why would Yeshua be doing this on any other day other than the Passover? There's two variations of the calendar that year. And what he did, how he fulfilled it was, he instituted the new covenant on the Passover. Hallelujah for that. Now, Yeshua died on the festival of unleavened bread, which was the, which was the first day of unleavened bread, which is a, high holy, it's a holy, high holy Sabbath day. And it was the same day that Israel left Egypt. And this is how he fulfilled that. They were delivered from their bondage, and we are delivered from our bondage by Yeshua dying on the cross and paying for our sins on that day. And then we have the wave sheep offering here. And... Yeshua fulfilled the barley wave sheep offering by presenting himself to Thomas for inspection. As you would inspect the wave sheep of the barley, Yeshua presented himself to be inspected by a Thomas on this day. I've proven that in, the, in this video, in this other video that I've done. And then Shavuot, first, first fruits of the wheat heart, of the wheat harvest, the festival of weeks, was fulfilled by Yeshua when he sent the helper, the Ruach HaKodesh for us, given to his followers. And it's by the Ruach HaKodesh that I was given the wisdom and the understanding to discern this literal divider to rightly divide these festivals in Leviticus 23. So we didn't need the temple scroll to do it, I, but because of the temple scroll, it just verifies these things in the Torah, in the book of Leviticus. Hallelujah for this information. All praise to the Father and the Son. Hallelujah. Hopefully you're blessed by this video and this understanding. Please use this understanding. Test this understanding. And share this understanding with your brothers and sisters in the body of Messiah. Hallelujah. And I'm signing off from Cyprus. Shalom.